and the second talk here. So the last talk is <coughs> about the eigenvalues, the eigenvalues. So this talk is about the how to how to construct the examples, the embedded examples. So the title of my talk is the hard surfaces in a unit sphere with the constant the high uh, order the mean curvature. Here the M's mean curvature. So <coughs> So at the, uh, the last, yesterday, I also the, introduced these the, the definitions about the high the order mean curvature. So here I record record it. So if I, if the k1 kn are the principal curvatures of a uh, hard surface C, M. Then the M's mean curvature is defined by this uh, equation. Here, the HM equal to this one. <coughs> so from this uh, definition, we can get that uh, for the space for uh, for the space form for the hard surfaces in the space form. Here, space form means that the remaining manifold with the sectional curvature, the uh, the constant C. <coughs> if C equal to zero, means the uh, Euclidean space. If the C is equal to one, uh, this uh, Swiss form is equivalent to the unit sphere. If C, C equal to the minus one, the negative one, so here uh, the Swiss form is a <coughs> hyperbolic space. So <coughs> for this uh, Swiss form, for the hard surfaces in the Swiss form, we can uh, get uh, this uh, the equations. So if the m equal to y, and h y is nothing but the mean curvature. So for m equal to 2, the r, uh, <coughs> the scalar curvature r, the capital R is equal to the, uh, this one, these uh, terms. So if the m equal to n, n is the dimension of these the hard surfaces, we can get uh, this uh, gauss kronig curvature k is equal to the h n. Here, the Hn. Hn equal to the K1 the product, uh, times the K2 the times the Kn. So this is the definition about the, the M's mean curvature Hm. So the second definition is about the rotational hyper surfaces. Since the rotational hyper surfaces of a unit sphere <coughs> or in a Euclidean space are used to obtain the examples of compact embedded here, embedded hard surfaces with constant M's mean curvature. So <coughs> we give the definition about the rotational hard surfaces in a unit sphere. So if a hard, if a hard surface is in a unit sphere is called a rotational hard surface, if and only if M is an ON invariant uh, hard surfaces. Here, this uh, ON is uh, considered as a subgroup of the isometry of the unit sphere, of a unit sphere. So from this uh, definition, we can construct the rotational hard surfaces uh, by the profile curve. So next. <coughs> At the first, we give the profile curve, the alpha S here, the S. S the denotes the arc length of the alpha uh, S. S denotes the arc length of the profile curve. So <coughs> by uh, using uh, this profile curve, we can construct the rotational hard surfaces in unit sphere or in uh, space forms. So let us uh, parametric the profile curve by this one. Since it's a curve, so this is y1 equal to the y1s. So y n plus y equal to y n plus s, and y n plus two equal to the y n plus two s. So it uh, follows that the rotational hard surface is generalized by this the profile curve alpha. So here the x s the t one the t n minus one equal to this one. Here the s the arc length of the profile curve. The t one the phi i the phi one phi phi one phi two the phi n. Uh, is an orthogonal the parametrization of a unit sphere here. So, so the phi one square the plus the phi n square equal to one. So, <coughs> this is the this is the method of the how to construct the rotational hyper surfaces by using of the profile curve. 
the alpha s. So this is the, our the method. So next we will give the example about the rotational hypersurfaces with the H k equal to zero means the maybe means the the k minus one minimal hypersurfaces. So from here, this is the Clifford hypersurfaces. Uh, we can compute its the principal curvature, the lambda one, lambda two, the <coughs> lambda n. So here, the lambda one equal to the lambda two. We can get that. Uh, is equal to the square root of the k over n minus k. So mu equal to this uh, number. So by a direct cal calculation, we can get the case mean curvature Hk satisfied this equation here. <coughs> so from here, if the k equal to 1, we know that uh, this uh, uh, half surface is, is a Clifford minimal torus, Clifford minimal torus. So if the k so this is an example about the rotational hypersurfaces. So next we give the background of the, our the subject. So at the first, uh, I'd like to introduce the hypersurfaces uh, with the high order mean curvature constants in a Euclidean space. So here, if the m equal to 1, m1 means the mean curvature. So <coughs> If H1 equal to constant, means the mean curvature constant. So uh, in the 1951, the Hopf proposed the following conjecture, this conjecture. So Hopf's conjecture said that if M is an uh, n-dimensional compact hover surfaces with a constant mean curvature in a Euclidean space, then M must be the round sphere, the round sphere. So then the Alexander Loof proved the, the Hopf's conjecture is true if M is an embedded, embedded hypersurfaces. Embedded means that there are no the intersection point. So here is the Alexander Loof results. So then <coughs> the Winter and the Professor Xiang uh, construct the, some of the counter examples. So, uh, they, can con um, they can construct the many counter examples, maybe the, with the, the genus, the one genus, two, maybe the, <coughs> the other high the genus here. So from, the, uh, from their counter example, we know that the Hobbes conjecture is not true, is not true. So this is about uh, if the m equal to one, about the Hubble surfaces with the constant mean curvature in a Euclidean space. So Hopf's conjecture is not true. So next uh, we introduce that if m equal to two, m equal m is equal to two means that uh, the hard surfaces with constant scalar curvature. So about uh, the 20 years ago, Yao proposed the following conjecture, STL proof. So Yao's conjecture. Uh, is about the standard, the round spheres are the only possible compact hard surfaces in a sphere with the constant in Euclidean space. Sorry, in Euclidean space, <coughs> with the constant scalar curvature, with the constant scalar curvature. So about uh, this conjecture, uh, about this uh, Yaw's conjecture. And only Ross shows that the Yaw's conjecture is true if M. Uh, is uh, embedded here is also embedded hyper surfaces. So this uh, condition embedded is very important for this uh, uh, result. So <coughs> then another result about uh, uh, due to the Professor Chen. Professor Chen proved that the Yaw's conjecture is also true for uh, this the special classes. This special classes is about the locally conformally flat hyper surfaces. So locally conformally flat hypersurface, this means that these hypersurfaces has a matrix conformally to the flat, conformally to the standard matrix of Euclidean space, of Euclidean space. So this is about M equal to two, means the hypersurfaces with a constant scalar curvature in Euclidean space, in Euclidean space. 
So it's for the high dimension. Uh, for the for M greater than two, for M greater than two, we proposed the following generalized Yaw's conjecture. So this one. <coughs> so the standard round spheres are the only possible compact hard surfaces in Euclidean space with constant the the high order mean curvature constants HM. Here the M is uh, is greater than one. Greater than one. So, in fact, about this the conjecture, the Anony Ross and the Sabast Montel obtained the one result. This result showing that this conjecture is true if M is an embedded hover surfaces. Embedded hover surfaces. So, embedded, this condition is the necessary, uh, is important, is uh, here. So another is the result, our result. We, we proved the generalized your conjecture is true for the class of the locally conformally flat to the hard surfaces. So this is about the hard surfaces, hard surfaces in Euclidean space. Next we'll talk about the hard surfaces in a unisphere, in a unisphere. So since the Montel and the Ross the proved uh, this result, this result says that the, uh, the round sphere are the only the possible compact embedded hard surfaces with constant absolute curvature in Euclidean space. So it is naturally to uh, propose the following problem, this problem. Are there any other are uh, there any other the, uh, compact uh, embedded hover surfaces with a constant mean uh, M's mean curvature HM in a unit sphere except the the sphere and the Clifford the uh, Clifford the torus Clifford hover surfaces? Since we know that the the sphere and the Clifford hover surfaces uh, are embedded hover surfaces with a constant M's mean curvature in a unit sphere, so. So we know that the standard round spheres are compact embedded hover surfaces in a unit sphere. Another the example is the Clifford hover surfaces are compact embedded hover surfaces in a unit sphere. So except these are the two classes examples, we have the some other examples. So this is our problem. This is our problem. <coughs> in fact. For the m equal to y and the h equal to zero, this means the if the m is a minimal hover surfaces, minimal hover surfaces, and the Lawson Lawson proposed this conjecture: the only embedded the minimal torus in a Euclidean uh, in a unit sphere of the dimension three is the Clifford torus. Is a Clifford torus. So this is about embedded embedded minimal torus. Minimal torus. So about uh, this is uh, Lawson's conjecture. So about the if the for the special hyper surfaces for the rotational hyper surfaces, the Osuke, Brito, and Leite proved the following the results. This is the result said that there are no compact the minimal embedded rotational hyper surfaces of a unit sphere other than Clifford hyper uh, Clifford hyper surfaces. And the round geodesic spheres. Since we know that the Clifford hover surfaces, the Clifford hover surfaces, the minim, uh, the Clifford the minimal torus and the spheres are the minimal embedded rotational hover surfaces. So, so <coughs> Otsuki, Brito, and later proved that there are no other uh, non-trivial examples, but the uh, examples of the minimal embedded rotational hover surfaces. In a unit sphere, in a unit sphere. So this is by m equal to one and h equal to zero. If the for the constant mean curvature, constant mean curvature, and the hyper surface is not the minimal, not the minimal. The ripple proved uh, this uh, result. If h isn't equal to zero and uh, h is also uh, is then equal to the, uh, the square root three over three. Then there exists a compact 
embedded hypersurfaces of the Euclidean sphere with constant curvature edge, other than the spheres and the Clifford hypersurfaces. Clifford hypersurfaces. So from here, we know that uh, almost the almost the constant mean curvature. There exist uh, the many examples. There exist the many example, uh, examples such that uh, the example is a uh, compact uh, embedded hypersurfaces of the unit sphere of the dimension three. So <coughs> this is the but uh, but uh, here. The dimension of the hyper surfaces is two. For the high dimension, for high dimension, the bridge two and the later proved this result for high dimension. But here, the mean curvature is small. So, it, so for the small positive mean curvature edge, constant mean curvature edge, there are some the non-trivial embedded rotational hyper surfaces with constant mean curvature edge in unit sphere in unit sphere. So here, uh, since they using the, the the continued arguments, so they assumed that the edge is a small positive, the small positive. So this is about the constant mean curvature. So for the general edge, the rational pattern has proved this result. For the n, the dimension n is greater than 2 and equal to 2, and any integer k integer, uh, k is greater than 2 and equal to 2. If the edge, the mean curvature edge, constant mean curvature edge, is between the, these two numbers, between the, these two numbers, and then there exists a compact non-trivial uh, embedded hypersurfaces with constant mean curvature edge. Here, the edge, the mean curvature is positive in the sphere. Hmm? Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, this example is nothing but the rotational hypersurfaces. Yes. So, Padom's results. So, from here, we know that if the n equal to 2, and this result reduced to the ripple's results. Ripple's results. So for the m equal to 2, this means that the hypersurfaces with constant scalar curvature, so if the r, the scalar curvature r is greater than this the number n minus 1, the square, and uh, the less than the n times n minus 1, uh, and later proved that there exist the many compact non-trivial embedded, in fact, here, the rotational hypersurfaces with constant scalar curvature r in a unit sphere, in a unit sphere. Then, she proposed, she proposed the following uh, question, following problem. Are there embedded hypersurfaces in a unit sphere with constant scalar curvature r? Here, r is greater than uh, and equal to the n times n minus one, other than the Clifford hypersurfaces and the spheres and the spheres. So, uh, about the about the 19 years ago, 19 years ago, Professor Later proposed uh, uh, this uh, problem. So, <coughs> if r equal to the n times n minus one for this special case. Professor Lee and I proved that there are no compact embedded rotational hypersurfaces. Here we we added the condition rotational rotational hypersurfaces with a constant uh, with a constant scalar curvature n times n minus one of a unit sphere, other than the Clifford hypersurfaces and around the geodesic sphere, around the geodesic sphere. Since the Clifford hypersurfaces uh, Hubble surfaces satisfied this uh, condition. This uh, Clifford Hubble surfaces is a uh, embedded, a compact embedded rotational Hubble surfaces with a constant scalar curvature n times n minus one. So this is uh, this about the scalar curvature r is equal to n times n minus one. If the r is greater than n times n minus one. But here, we restrict the dimension n is equal to the 3, 4, and 5. And we proved 
for this special uh, for this uh, special case for the special case we proved that there exists the n-dimensional uh, compact embedded rotational hub surfaces with constant scalar curvature r of unit sphere other than the Clifford hub surfaces and uh, a sphere of the radius, the square root, the n times n minus one over the r. Here we construct, uh, we can construct this uh, non-trivial example. We can construct the non-trivial example. So if the r for this the dimension n is equal to six, we can prove the, this one. But here the the r the scalar curvature r isn't equal to the fourteen. And then we can get uh, there also exists uh, some the non-trivial com uh, compact embedded rotational hub surfaces with the constant scalar curvature. So this this one. So for this the case, for this case, for but here the for the general dimension a, for the general dimension a is greater than six. We can prove the. This one, but here the scalar curvature r is greater than this one and uh, less than this one, less than this number. So there exists the, the n-dimensional compact embedded rotational hypersurfaces with a constant scalar curvature other than the Clifford hypersurfaces and the sphere. In fact, recently we can prove the, this result. Chen Li, uh, Professor Chen Li and I proved for the any the dimension n. The greater than two and the n integer, uh, integer the k greater than two. If the scalar curvature r constant in the scalar curvature r is between these uh, two numbers, and then there exists a compact non-trivial embedded hyper surfaces with the uh, constant in the scalar curvature r in a unit sphere. Here, this is the Example is also about the rotational hyper surfaces. In fact, if the k, in fact, if k equal to three, we can prove that there uh, exists at least the three non-trivial embedded hyper surfaces with constant scalar curvature r. If the k equal to five, uh, there exists, uh, there exists, at, uh, there exists at least the six. The non-trivial embedded hyper surfaces with constant scalar curvature r. So, so this is uh, our theorem. In fact, we give a remark. Uh, this the result is a generalization of the theorem two, three, and four. So this is the detail of uh, why we, uh, why this the result is a generalization of the theorem the above theorems. In fact, uh, we're also using this lemma. This is a uh, calculate, calculate. So for the n equal to this one and the k greater than four, then we have uh, this following equality. So if m is greater than three, but here the h m, the m mean curvature h is equal to zero, we can prove that there are no compact embedded here rotational hyper surfaces, rotational hyper surfaces. So <coughs> with the with h m equal to zero, other than the Clifford hyper surfaces and the round geodesic sphere and the round geodesic sphere. For the special case, this is about the m minus one minimal hyper surfaces. M minus uh, one minimal hyper surfaces. So, if M equal to four, we also can prove the following results. But for here, the n, the dimension n is greater than four, and the integer the k is greater than two. If the force the mean curvature h four is between the, these uh, numbers, in fact, for the different k, the numbers are different. So here. <clears throat> then there exists a compact the non-trivial embedded hyper surfaces with H4 is a constant in the sphere. So uh, similarly, uh, with the, similarly with the M is equal to 2, here if the K is equal to the 6, there exists at least the 6 non-trivial embedded hyper surfaces with H4 is a constant, here the constants. So <coughs> this is a. In fact, for the general M, for the general M, for the but here we restrict the H M the small, very small positive, 
So small positive, we can prove the, this one. So the for, the, for any integer, the m, the greater than 1 and less than n minus 1, there exists the many the non-trivial embedded hypersurfaces in a unit sphere with the uh, high order the mean curvature constant here. Constant here. So next, uh, I'll give the, some the proof, proof of the theorem 6. So, <clears throat> At the first, if the we assume that the prof, uh, we assume that f s equal to the well one s here, well one s is uh, we know that the well one s the s is the arc length of the profile curve of a rotational hypersurfaces. So, Professor the to come and Dajie proved that this is the result. If m is a rotational hypersurfaces in a unit sphere. Then the principal curvature satisfied this, this equations. So here f dot means the df over the ds. S is the arc length of the profile curve. So, so from here we can uh, we knowing that uh, we we knowing that if m is a rotational hyper surfaces, then this hyper surfaces uh, has at most the two dif uh, two distinct principal curvatures. So has at most the two distinct principal curvatures. So um, moreover, the, moreover, the principal curvature, if it's the multiplied is the n minus one, n minus one, then we know that this the principal curvature uh, is the non uh, non negative, non negative. So here we know that non negative. Here you, so we uh, since we know that the f is. Uh, Positive f is a positive, so we know that uh, this the principal curvature is a non-negative, <coughs> and uh, this the multi uh, of this the principal curvature is n minus one, at least the n minus one. So this is a rotational hypersurface. It is a very special the hypersurface. So about the roti uh, rotational hypersurface. In fact, by the definition, by the definition and this theorem, by the M's mean curvature, the definition and this the theorem, we can easily get the, this result. We can easily get this, this result. So, <coughs> for the M, for uh, M or rotational hub surfaces in unit sphere, is M minimal. Is M minimal? M minimal means that the HM equal to zero. Here, M minimal means that HM equal to zero. But you know, some uh, other person coined that uh, here, if M, HM equal to zero, they coined that the hub surface is, is uh, A minus one minimal. Uh, A minus one minimal. By our the definition, we know that uh, if the M is a minimal, means that uh, uh, the hub surface is, is one minimal. So for this uh, rotational hypersurfaces is M minimal if and only if the F here, F satisfied uh, the following equation, the following different equation. So from the, in fact, uh, this uh, equation is the ordinary differential equation of order two of, uh, sorry, differential, the ODE, the equation. So. So the about the, this equation is equivalent to it's the first of the order integral integral. <coughs> so here the capital K is a integral constant. Here the capital K is the integral constant. Integral constant. So <coughs> next if we want to construct if we want to consider the uh, rotational hypersurfaces, we only need to consider the, these equations. These two equations. So next, we will consider the, uh, how to um, solve the, these two equations. So from the from this equation, from this equation, we can get that the capital K is a non-negative and less than the K one here, the K zero, K zero here, K zero equal to this number. So. Then we have uh, then we have to uh, consider the three cases. The first case is the k, the capital k, the integral k, the integral constant in the k is equal to zero. So if the integral constant in the k equal to zero, from here, we know that the one minus f square minus f dot square equal to zero. So from this equation, if the integral 
constant k equal to zero, we know that the f is a positive, so uh, we can obtain the one minus f square minus f dot square equal to zero. So if we, this equal to zero, we can integral this equation and uh, got out the result. <coughs> so if k equal to zero, give the, the totally elastic n sphere. So from here, if the, this equal to zero, this equal to zero, we can get the equations. So we can get the k equal to one, uh, the capital K equal to zero gives us a totally elastic n sphere. So if the k obtain its uh, maximum uh, k zero, k zero, this the volume if k equal to k zero, sorry, from here, if k equal to k zero, we can obtain f dot equal to zero. So we can um, obtain that it's the principal curvature, the lambda one, lambda n minus one, equal to lambda n. Sorry, we, sorry, maybe should the positive, not negative. Maybe the ne this here, the negative. So this, uh, this case the corresponding to the Clifford the Harbor surfaces, Clifford Harbor surfaces here. So this is uh, about the, for the, uh, now we introduced the last, the, fun, the last case, the last case. This case is about the K is a positive and let's say the capital K zero from our the equations, equation one, and it's the integral, uh, integral equation, we can get that and in the non-constant solution of this equation is a period, and the, <coughs> the period PK is given by the following integral, by uh, this integral. Here the F0 and the F1 are the two solutions of this equation. Of this uh, equation, is this equal to zero? This equal to this equa this equation, this equation. So next, if we want to consider the, the rotational uh, hypersurfaces, something about uh, rotational hypersurfaces, we only need to consider the, the we only need to the estimate the period PK. We only need to the consider the, the equation and uh, estimate the period PK since we have the following dilemma. The first dilemma is uh, if M is a totally uh, elastic compact embedded rotational half surfaces, if and only if here the period capital PK equal to the two pi over the K for some integer K, so integer K here, Embedded here, embedded if and only if the period PK equal to the two pi over K for some of the K. So, so next we, we'll, if we want to find the embedded hyper surfaces, embedded hyper surfaces, we only need to find the some of the find some of the capital K, find the some capital K such that uh, this period PK is equal to the two pi over K. Since the here, from here, we know that uh, since uh, this period uh, is uh, this the function, here the, cap uh, the period PK is a function about uh, the capital K. So uh, moreover, this, uh, f uh, this function is a continued function about the capital K. So we will try to the we will try to find the sum of the special k such that this period is equal to the two pi over k. If we find uh, such the uh, if we find the such k, we know that this half surface is corresponding to the embedded rotational half surfaces. So by a direct calculation, we obtain this dilemma. This lemma for the n I, m, uh, we have the period p k, the capital p k is greater than pi and less than the two pi, less than two pi. So if the p k is greater than pi and less than two pi, so we knowing that then uh, there does not exist the any integer k such that uh, this period p k is equal to the two pi over k, right? <coughs> So from this uh, inequality, we know that uh, there does not exist uh, any integer the k, integer k, such that uh, such that uh, p k 
equal to the 2 pi over k. If it's the 4k equal to 1, this is the pk equal to the 2 pi. But here, the period pk is less than 2 pi. For the k equal to 2, uh, this will pk is, uh, uh, the period pk is equal to pi, but here pk is greater than pi. So from this equality, we know that uh, there does not there does not uh, does not exist the any the integer the k such that the period p k is equal to the two pi over k. So from this result, we know that there does not exist the non-trivial embedded compact rotational half surfaces in a unit sphere satisfied the uh, the h m equal to zero h m equal to zero. So this is uh, briefly the proof of our the results, the six. So next, <coughs> I give the outline, the proof of the theorem, these theorems. So firstly, I'd like to the, introduce to the, this the lemma. If M is a, a complete, here, complete hyper surfaces in a unit sphere with constant M's mean curvature, HM, and uh, with the two distinct principal curvature, here we assume that the M has the two di distinct principal curvature, lambda and mu, then we can get uh, the integral of some manifolds through the, the x corresponding to this uh, principal curvature. This principal curvature is the multiplicated uh, of the multi uh, multiplicated city is uh, n minus one, n minus one. So here, this uh, sub-manifold corresponding to the lambda is the umbilical in M and the unit sphere and the unit sphere. And the second <coughs> result said that the integral uh, curve of the principal curvature of the principal uh, of the principal vector fields corresponding to the principal curvature mu is a geodesic. This means that uh, it is a geodesic. So this is the first uh, result about the first lamb. So the second lamb about, uh, of this the theorem is that if M is an n-dimensional complete, here also complete hyper surfaces in a unit sphere with the height <coughs> order, the mean curvature is a constant and with the two distinct principal curvature, lambda and mu, here lambda and mu, then M is an isometric uh, to the warped product here, the warped product of the, the, this one. Here, this is a sphere. This is a sphere. sphere. We know that the, the sectional curvature of the sphere is this one. Sectional curvature of the sphere uh, of the sphere is this one. <coughs> here, the W equal to this one. Satisfied, and the W satisfied the following the equation. This equation. This equation. You know, similarly, we can integral, uh, integral this uh, equation. We can get uh, this uh, integral equation here. The capital C is the uh, integral constant. Integral constant here. The capital C is the integral constant. So, so here from the lemma, we know that uh, from this lemma. Sorry, from this lemma, we know that the uh, the sectional curvature of a sphere is this one, is this one. On the other hand, we know uh, we know that the radius of a sphere is this one by the rotational hypersurfaces. Then we can find this one. In fact, uh, in fact, we know that. <coughs> in fact, the to come and the Dajie proved. The Proved that for the hyper surfaces, maybe M in a unit sphere, if the M has the if M has the two distinct principal curvature, lambda equal to the lambda equal to the lambda one equal to the lambda a minus one and the lambda a uh, equal to mu. If here lambda isn't equal to zero and uh, there's some of the relationship between the lambda and the mu, maybe lambda and the mu.
Then we know that this is a half surface, this M is a rotational half surfaces. So their relationship, there, there exists the relationship between the half surfaces with the two distinct principal curvature and the rotational half surfaces. So if the, there are the, some of the uh, exist the function um, related to lambda and mu, then we know that M is a rotational half surfaces. On the other hand, we know that on one hand, we know that the, uh, the curvature, the sectional curvature of this one, of the S A minus Y, the C S is equal to that, uh, is equal to this one, the C over the W square. And on the other hand, from the rotational half surfaces, from the rotational half surfaces, by the, from the rotational half surfaces generalized by the uh, by the profile curve, we know that uh, this is the radio, sorry, uh, the radio of the uh, unit sphere, radio of the sphere, radio of the sphere is this one. So from this, the radio, uh, on the, uh, in fact, uh, we know that this factor, we know that this factor, if the S, the square, maybe x1, x minus y square equal to the c square. We know that the sectional curvature of the S equal to the this one. Sectional curvature. So by using this relationship. You know what sorry. that is? Hmm? Sorry. The function Do you know what it is? Which one? The function that is the key is the sectional curvature. Oh F. Here. F. You mean the F? Hmm? That function. That function. Uh, uh, you mean this function or this function? Mm -hmm. F lambda mu. Oh, lambda mu. Oh, oh, oh so, sorry, sorry. Any function, any function. Any sorry. Function. Yeah, yes. If the cells uh, satisfy the relationship between the lambda and the mu. Rotational half surfaces. Oh, this function means. So here the to come the to come and the algebra for any function. So there's some function f. Uh, yeah, yes. You don't remember what that is. Uh, no, 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 no. For some uh, for any function, maybe the lambda mu, if the some relationship. Maybe the someone sorry, Dick. not the special function, even for the any function. Uh, linear function, not a linear function. Maybe the a square, the lambda square, the mu square. We here lambda plus mu isn't equal to zero. Sorry. Sorry, I can check it. <laughs> Sorry. Not a special function, not a function, in fact. <clears throat> so from the, this is the relationship. So from here, we can get the, uh, the C over the square, C over square equal to this one, equal to this one. E, that is this one, so that is this equation. So then, from the, this equation, we know that the W from this equation, since the, this equation is there, does not the constant the S here, I mean that the S uh, is at this point uh, in this equation, so we know that the WS is a period. So, this, uh, so WS is a period. And the, so, and the period is the following, the capital T is uh, this one. So the T1 and the T2 are the two solutions of this equation, two solutions of this, this equation. In fact, uh, you can uh, prove the, you can prove that this equation um, <coughs> has the two solutions. You can compute it's the Q, sorry, 
we will find using this here you can compute the dq over the ds means the q dot the q here this equal here so from this equation from this the inequality you can uh, you can get that the q has the two solutions two solutions so here the t1 and the t2 denotes the, the two solutions of this equation so this is the period the, the capital t then we can obtain the, the period the pk is the period the capital p of a uh, half surfaces is equal to this one here the capital t capital t equal to this one capital t equal to this one the integral integral so <clears throat> By using our the relationship between the lambda and the f, we can get this period is equal to this one. So next, we we'll, if we want to construct the embedded hub surfaces, it is uh, uh, if and only if we should to estimate the this is the period p. So <clears throat> so we knowing that this lemma m is a Jurassic compact, non-totally non Jurassic compact embedded half surfaces. If and only if the period is equal to this one, uh, uh, this period is equal to the two pi over k for some integer, the integer k, some integer k. So, so if we want to uh, construct the embedded half surfaces, we only need to the find the some the k, some k such that uh, we only need to find the sum uh, k and the capital C such that uh, this uh, period p is equal to the 2 pi over k. Since the, uh, this uh, period is a function about the capital C, capital C. So in order to estimate our the period, we need the following results, the following lemma, this lemma, this lemma. So the f the df square over the dx square is a negative and then we can get this the limit equal to this one equal to this one so then by the complication uh, calculations we obtain to the c is greater than the c0 and uh, we can compute the limit of these equations these equations the limit the p is this one, the p. <coughs> this is the p. So we can get this, this one. So <coughs> therefore, for any the fixed the h2 positive, uh, the function, the p h2 n c, takes all the value between the, this the two numbers, two numbers. Uh, since the c, you know, since the since the period, this function is a continuous. So, so is a continuous function. So we uh, knowing that the function takes all the value between the. the uh, this is a limit. So from here, you know that this is a limit c uh, approached to infinity, and uh, another one is the c uh, c approached to the c zero plus here. So. Uh, this is for the so we know that this period takes all the uh, value between the, these the two numbers since this uh, function is a continuous function continuous function and c is a, uh, greater than c zero and less than the infinity so from these uh, three two three equations we know that this uh, function takes all the value between the, these uh, two numbers this is a continue function. So here, so by a direct uh, uh, computation, we know that uh, this, uh, two, uh, this uh, two functions are decreasing function. On the other hand, we know that uh, this uh, function, uh, this the value of the special, uh, po uh, on the special point, uh, this function is equal to the 2 pi over k, then we know that, uh, the, then we know that, uh, <coughs> 
there exists, uh, we know that there ex uh, we deduce that the number 2 pi over k lies the, between the a h2 and the b h2. Since they are decreasing function, this, uh, the a, ax and bx are de decreasing function, so there exists the number, the 2 pi, the 2 pi over k lies the, between this and this one. So, therefore, we found the sum of the C such that uh, this uh, period P is equal to the 2 pi over K, 2 pi over K. So by using our the lemma, we know that there exists a compact uh, embedded hub surfaces with constant scalar curvature, with constant scalar curvature. Uh, moreover, this is the example, a non-trivial non example, non-trivial example. So this is about the one theorem. Another one is about the H4 is a positive. In a, uh, in a similarly, we can get that uh, these are the two functions. <coughs> Further, we know that the two functions are de decreasing function, decreasing function. And uh, here, the D, H1 uh, over the tiny the pi over K, the, uh, the, the power is 4, is equal to uh, 2 pi over K, this the function is the same, so uh, we can get the 2 pi over k. So <coughs> we can get that uh, there exists the there exists the 2 pi over k. We know that the 2 pi the here k is the same, k k is the same. So the 2 pi over k between the this the two uh, between the dh4 and the eh4. So. Hence, we can uh, get that there exists a constant the C2 such that this period is equal to the 2 pi over k. From, the, from here, we know that from here, we know that if k e equal to the 5, maybe we know that there exists at least the 5 uh, the non trivial embedded hypersurfaces. So from here, we know that from our the lemma, from our lemma, and this uh, and this uh, equation, we know that if k maybe k equal to the six, we know that there are at least uh, the sum of the non-trivial, the not one, uh, not only one, uh, more than one, more than one <coughs> non-trivial embedded hard surfaces in a unit sphere. So, for the last uh, theorem. I'll give the outline of the proof. So the, for the HM, we know that if the HM equal to zero, we can get this one, uh, we can get this the relationship. So the limit equal to the, the square root two pi. By continue arguments, we can fix the HM surface, uh, surface in the small such that the C, such that here the HM isn't equal to zero, but here, HM equal to zero since the period. This period is a function about the HM and the C. So here we using the this the function is a continuous function about the HM. So here, if the HM equal to zero, this the period, uh, this the limit equal to this number. So for the small, very small, so uh, so surface in the small the HM. A positive HM, so we can get that this period is greater than pi. Since we know that this number is greater than pi, so we can find the HM the surface in the small, such that this limit is also the greater than pi. On the other hand, we can deduce that from this HM the positive, we know that this limit is less than pi. So we know that this is a continuous function. Since we know that this uh, period is a continuous function, therefore there exists the sum the C, sum C. Here the HM is the same. Here the two equations the HM is the same. So there exists, uh, we using uh, that this function is a continuous function about the C. So there exists the sum C uh, such that this uh, limit this limit uh, such that this period is equal to pi. If this the period equal to pi, then we know that uh, there exists uh, some non-trivial embedded rotational hub surfaces in a unit sphere. So I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Very much. Thank you. Any questions?
Thank you. Thank you.